It's official, everybody. Cocky Calcium, that jerk, is going on a all-inclusive vacation to Mexico. <laughs> Baja California, that low calcium. Get it? See? California? Low calcium? Get it? You can see him chilling by the pool, forgetting his job duties, and learning a few new dance moves. Like trousseaus, which is basically that arm twerk when you put a blood pressure cuff on. He'll also learn Vostik sign, which is that smile when you touch the side of the face. Kind of like this. And he'll also have massive diarrhea, but more on this in a minute. Today we're wrapping up hypocalcemia. Hypo meaning low, cal meaning calcium, and emia in the blood. So calcium less than 9.0 in the blood. Calcium is regulated by three main hormones. First, the parathyroid hormone, which increases calcium concentration inside the blood. Next is calcitonin hormone, which decreases blood calcium and puts a ton of calcium into the bone. Third is calcitrol, which controls blood calcium by inhibiting the release of calcitonin. Basically, it reverses that ton of calcium in the bone, so calcium gets released into the bloodstream. Now, here's a little fun fact about calcium. His BFF, his best friend forever, is magnum magnesium. So calcium helps fill job functions for magnesium, often when magnesium is low. His worst enemy is friendly frat boy phosphate. So you'll often see when phosphate is low, calcium is high, and when calcium is low, phosphate's high. Now, calcium is a strong guy, and so his function is to keep the three Bs strong. So strong bones, blood, and beats. For blood, the clotting factors will be strong, and beats, we're talking about heartbeats. Now, the main causes that dump calcium out of the body and into the potty, we use the acronym low Kelly because it's like low California, get it? C-A, California. So the L stands for low parathyroidism. Now, since PTH, that parathyroid hormone, increases blood calcium levels, well then guys, decreased PTH secretion will decrease that blood calcium levels. So if your patient has a history of surgeries like a thyroidectomy, well then you wanna check the calcium levels like always. Pancreatitis is an inflammation inside the abdominal cavity, usually from infections, but it also causes low calcium primarily from the release of calcium soaps inside the abdominal cavity. And it stimulates calcitonin hormone to put all that calcitonin from the blood and into the bone. So calcitonin in the bone, right? O is for oral meds that deplete calcium, like laxatives and loop diuretics like furosemide. But also corticosteroids in large doses or prolonged use can cause a reaction to suppress that PTH, parathyroid hormone, and it suppresses calcium release in the blood. Anti-seizure medications like Dilantin, which is a phenobarbital, promote excretion of calcium by the kidneys. And our last two, phosphate enemas, which increase phosphate and decrease calcium. Remember, they're like arch enemies. And finally, citrate is an anticoagulant used in blood products. It is usually rapidly metabolized by the liver right here, but guys with liver damage or rapid administration of, let's say, stored blood products, it may cause hypocalcemia and low magnesium because citrate binds to calcium and magnesium in the blood. So remember, magnesium and calcium are BFFs, best friends forever. So they kind of follow each other around wherever they go. W is for wound drain, especially in the GI system where calcium is normally absorbed. And the next is kind of the same here, because see, chronic diseases like celiac disease and Crohn's disease, diseases of the bowel, cause malabsorption of calcium in the GI tract. C can also stand for chronic kidney issues, like excessive excretion of calcium by the kidneys or even diuretics that cause excretion of calcium through diuresis, basically peeing it out. A is for antibiotics. Now, some antibiotics can push calcium into the cell and decrease those serum blood levels of calcium. L is for low vitamin D or low magnesium levels, which can lead to hypocalcemia. Because remember, they help each other absorb in the body. So once again, I've said it before, but I'll say it again, magnesium and calcium are best buds, and they love vitamin D together. People, let me tell you about my best friend. He's a warm-hearted
I is for increased phosphate levels in the blood because remember, phosphate and calcium are arch enemies and do the opposite of each other. So if one is high, well, then the other one is low. So what's going on in hypocalcemia? Well, low, low calcium, right? And since cocky calcium has gone to Mexico, Baja, California, well, then everything on the body is on vacation. So when you're on vacation, you usually forget about your job duties. So you think they're going to be strong bones? Well, no, guys, there's going to be weak, so we'll have fractures. You think they'll be strong clotting factors? Not at all, it'll be weak, so big risk for bleeding. You think they'll be strong heartbeats? No, there's going to be dysrhythmias. You guys, he's in Mexico, he's excited, he forgot about his jobs. In the heart, you'll have excitability. So ventricular tachycardia, a very deadly rhythm that can be shocked. Now before it gets to VTAC, the EKG might have prolonged QT intervals and ST segments, as well as slow clotting factors, so a huge risk for bleeding and even heart failure. So the lungs will be excited, you'll have laryngeospasms, which causes a strider. It's basically a narrowing of the windpipe, which causes a harsh, high-pitched noise when breathing. Now it's rare in adults, but it's very serious because it's an airway problem. Difficulty breathing called dyspnea and even crackles when heart failure is present. GI will be excited, so you'll have massive diarrhea as well as intestinal cramping. So neurologically, you'll have excitability, so seizures, confusion, even personality changes, and may even exhibit signs of dementia or even psychosis. Musculoskeletal, the biggest two indicators of low calcium are our two famous dance moves. First, we have trousseaus, which is our tambourine dance move, basically that arm twerk with the blood pressure cuff on. Next is chivostics, which is that cheesy smile when touching the temporal lobe area, like this. All right, now that we know what's wrong with the patient, what are we going to do about it? Here's some nursing interventions for hypocalcemia. And honestly, it's a simple fix. We're just going to add some calcium. So we use our acronym FAST for nursing interventions. So foods high in calcium, we use the acronym LSD. L for leafy greens like spinach, colored greens, and rhubarb. S is for sardines and tofu. And D is for dairy like cheeses, milk, and yogurt. A is for administration of meds like calcium acetate, now the trade name being Fos Low. We'll give IV calcium and oral calcium with vitamin D supplements to make sure they absorb. Now doctors may order calcium containing antiacids like Tums or even Maalox, also called Mylanta, generic name for aluminum hydroxide or magnesium hydroxide. Because please remember the NCLEX is only going to ask you these generic names, no more trade names. Now, these are given to increase magnesium in hopes that calcium will increase too because, let's be honest, they're best friends. Oh, my lanta. S is for safety, so the risk for falls, fractures, and bleeding. Because, guys, remember, the three Bs calcium is responsible. We want to protect and make strong. So for weak bones, we have fracture precautions. So, guys, watch out for falls. Weak blood, you have a low clotting factor, so big risk for bleeding. So educate your patients to be careful when shaving, as well as not to bear down when pooping, as well as not to brush too hard when brushing their teeth. Now the last one is weak beats, so watch out for cardiac dysrhythmias. T is for teach, so take calcium booster supplements like magnesium supplements and vitamin D and avoid calcium depleters like laxatives and loop diuretics. All right guys, that wraps up low calcium, that hypocalcemia. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. Alright guys, see you next time.